Greetings Ranger fans, Jake here for a deeper look at Episode 2 of Power Rangers Dino Fury, Sporex Unleashed. But first, a rapid run through. Let's kick off the counter. It's Morphin Time! Okay, so we open on Zato, Amelia, and Ollie practicing their new morph out in Dino Henge. This thing takes a lot of practice. They teleport down to the base, because they can do that, where Ollie grabs the energy scanner Void Knight left behind and wants to hook it up to his mom's drone to find all the sports before they hatch, but the others are like, nah, man. Because they want to warn everybody first, and they're also kind of iffy about mixing human tech with alien tech, because I guess I saw that one episode of Super Ninja Steel, so instead they teleport out to the city and they turn to Zato like, hey dude, you're an alien. So he retracts his antenna because he can do that, and they run to Warden Garcia instead of the police and, wait, why did they go to the city again? They tell him to be on the lookout for flying glowy alien blobby things, and he's like, I do not believe you. So Ollie secretly shows his mom the scanner while Zato and Amelia run off to Buzz Blast, where her boss Jane has just bought a robot assistant, Jay Borg, from Hartford Industries. Top of the line, robotic children. Anyway, fast forward shenanigans, and everyone's distracted by a viral video of a Sporex hatching by the dam, so Zato and Amelia call up Ollie, who ditches his mom by Dino Hands, where Void Knight and Shockhorn were trying to breach the defense grid, and they see this lady with this scanner. That's not good. But the rangers teleport to the dam, shiny, to fight the new Sporex, Mucus, and show off their new morph sequence. Gorgeous. And they slash Mucus into goo, and wow, that was easy. But Shockhorn arrives, and Zato uses the stick Dino Key. Ew. Then henchmen attack and Mucus resurrects and he runs off with Shockhorn to join Void Knight who's forcing Dr. Akana to work for him but the rangers come to her rescue and she blows up the drone and Shockhorn lands in the city but he grows giant so Solon and Zato wake up the T-Rex Champion Zord while Amelia and Ollie keep him busy with their boost keys. A lot of merch being sold right here. Now the Champion Zord transforms to Balmo, pulls off some sick moves to blow up Shockhorn and then he transforms into a Sporex Egg which is somehow even more powerful. Void Knight shows up, takes it and is just like, thank you for that, and teleports away. So the rangers return to base, Ollie learns not to go it alone, Zato praises their teamwork, Buzz Blast broadcasts the rangers warning the citizens of Pine Ridge to call their Sporex report hotline. Probably could have tried that at the start. And Void Knight takes Mucus back to his mysterious base at Area 62, where he pops his superpowered Sporex egg into an old jukebox machine and declares I need more power. Roll credits. And that's the end of the episode. Now, let's take a deeper look. While the premiere needs to introduce the world and the characters, it's often the job of the second episode to not only complete that introduction, but also to establish the rules for the series moving forward, both in terms of story engine and story structure. Now, Power Rangers has always had a pretty well-established story structure. Traditionally, a standard episode will have a new villain, a pair of ground fights, a sword battle, a light comedic subplot, and a problem of the day that leads to the lesson of the day, conveyed in some heartwarming manner. If we're lucky, we also often get some added element that pushes the story of the season forward, but not always. In his recent interview with Sci-Fi, showrunner Simon Bennett has addressed the strong focus on these traditional structural elements in the past, largely championed by Haim Saban, and expressed that these mandates have been somewhat relaxed for Power Rangers Dino Fury, allowing for more serialized elements to be incorporated. However, during this outing, we don't really see much breaking of that mold quite yet, despite some small deviations here and there. For instance, Mucus subverts the role of the new monster arriving to terrorize the populace by being largely harmless. But when Shockhorn enters the battle, they basically take over the heavy-hitting Monster of the Week role, and things are pretty well played straight from there. Interestingly, Sporks Unleashed actually appears to be deliberately dodging a baked-in opportunity to subvert classic expectations, but this is something that only becomes clear by looking at the original source material. Kishiryu Sentai Ryu Soldier. You see, one of the other classic mandates of producing Power Rangers is the use of the Japanese Super Sentai footage for many of their large action set pieces, usually averaging about four minutes per episode. While Destination Dino Henge took the popular route of premieres being entirely original, outside of a few brief shots in Zato's flashback footage, Sporks Unleashed makes use of a fair bit of battle footage from Ryu Soldier's second episode, Soul is One. But what's really interesting is the footage that they chose not to use. The extended battle sequence of that episode actually showed the Red Ranger Zord, Tiramigo, initially being defeated by the monster, and the three rangers ended up using their power-ups to take on the giant creature themselves through a strategic use of the stink bomb attack until the Zord was able to recover which you would expect to be a pretty ideal sequence for them to use here. If you really want to subvert expectations for an American audience, why not have the Rangers fight the giant monster themselves? I mean, yes, we do get the brief shots of Amelia and Ollie using the gravity and hyperboost keys, respectively, but the stink dino key is notably absent from the sequence with the giant shockhorn. This becomes even stranger when we recognize that the stink dino key was being very intentionally used by veteran ranger Zato where his counterpart, Ko, initially used it accidentally. And when you consider that the moral core of this episode was for Ali to learn about teamwork, it feels like him working strategically with Zato to take on a giant monster would have been a perfectly fitting culmination. 
Plus, this all feels like a more economic and thematically fitting use of the episode's runtime than the largely non-sequitur J-Borg sequence, which really kind of came out of nowhere here. However, based off the aforementioned statements by Simon Bennett, I suspect this may all tie into a larger context, especially considering the scenes that come immediately after Shockhorn's defeat. Bear with me here. Zato explicitly states that, after being blown up, Sporks come back many times more powerful than before, suggesting that that may not be the last we see of Shockhorn. By only showing the triumphant victory and cutting out the initial struggle, we not only firmly establish Zato as being a skilled veteran ranger, unlike Ryu Soldier's Co., but we also free up that footage for later use, so that the contrast between future struggles and the apparent ease here can be used to highlight the increased strength of the Sporex. I mean, it's not like this would be the first time that a giant monster battle was cut in half for later use. Back in Power Rangers Ninja Steel, the Ninja Yokai Kamaitachi was split into the identical twin monsters of Ripper Rap and Trapsaw for use in the episodes Forged in Steel and the Ranger Ribbon, to allow for a slightly later introduction of the Ninja Steel Megazord. So it seems like there's a good chance they're engaging in a similar technique here. However, all that being said, I may just be reading too much into this, and it may just be a simple case of overlooking an opportunity to better explore this week's moral of teamwork. After all, it's not as if this episode doesn't have other issues with staying focused. The J-Borg scene in particular doesn't really seem to contribute anything to the plot, outside of providing a bit of cartoonish physical comedy and being a fun reference to Operation Overdrive. Even if the character ends up being important to later episodes, she doesn't really appear to fit organically into this plot, as Zato and Amelia could have arrived right when the viral video of Mucus was revealed, and it would not have changed a single thing outside of freeing up screen time for other plot points. And beyond that, there is a lot of jumping around in this episode. From beginning to end, we jump from the forest to the base to the city to the park office to Buzz Blast to the forest to the dam to the forest to the city and the base to just the city, then back to the base, then back to Buzz Blast before finally landing at Area 62. And while I can definitely see that they're trying to show off the new teleportation effects, and they have every right to because they're amazing and I love them and they are absolutely gorgeous, it does get to be a little much after a while. The initial visit to the city stands out in particular, because while it is a lovely setting and provides a wonderful character moment for Zato to see how much Earth has changed and how he's going to have to work to fit in, there's no real in-universe reason for them to be going there when their actual destination is the park warden's office. We also have a bit of a clumsy handling of our moral, as the whole issue of it being too dangerous to mix human and alien technology doesn't really feel like it holds much water. And Honestly, it feels like a great plan the Rangers really should have given more consideration to. Especially when the actual issue with Ollie's plan was the risk of Void Knight coming back for the scanner. So the moral really ended up coming across as, you should trust the judgment of the ancient alien, cyborg dinosaur, and the ghost hunting paparazzi you just met this afternoon over your own personal judgment and your trust in the capability of your own mother. Which, I mean, obviously the intent was for it to be about open and honest communication and cooperation between teammates, but this is what happens when one focuses a little too much on getting the characters from A to B, and not quite enough on making sure that each step along the way makes logical sense in context. So if I had to sum up this episode, I'd say it's slightly self-indulgent? They show off some gorgeous effects work here with the teleportations and the fantastic new morphing sequence, set up some great plot points with Void Knight and Area 62, introduce the potentially fun secondary characters of Mucus and Jayborg, and explore the implications of the premise creatively with the morph training and the establishment of the Ranger Hotline to engage the citizenry of Pine Ridge with the events of the series moving forward. Plus, making Buzz Blast the source of their intel does give the team as a whole a much stronger reason for making use of that set as a future hangout spot. However, this does come at the expense of having the plot flow smoothly and clearly tie thematically to the emotional core, focusing on great moments rather than strong connective tissue within the episode. That being said, the use of Dr. Akana's drone from the previous episode, the introduction of new plot points for future episodes, and the potentially forward-thinking use of Sentai footage all suggest that the connective tissue between episodes is going to be quite strong moving forward. So make sure to join me next time for a deeper look at Episode 3 of Power Rangers Dino Fury, Lost Signal. And if you would like to share this week's rapid run-through, you can find it as a standalone clip over at Morphin Legacy's YouTube channel. Please like, share, subscribe to us both, ring the bell for future notifications, and until next time, farewell Ranger fans, and let the power protect you. <laughs>